see this as a big problem. I, I don't think that that I, I'm really concerned about how things have been going because I think all of you have are sensitive to that issue. But um, so you know, I think you do avoid a lot of problems by going through Dana. Here's the problem for me, and the other half of why I wanted us to talk about it is because it's very effective and productive and efficient for us to be able to have electronic communications. No, I, Who said I know. open public meetings were except, effective except Ward. and efficient? And <laughs> well, oh, except for Ward, right? I mean, it's just I think it's a good way to get information out and back and forth, and uh, I realize that can circumvent the public viewing and participating, so I, I understand why it's a problem, but I had, um, I, I was brainstorming about this. Is there any way if we had, if every single email or discussion was instantly put up on our website and... and that's not the type of no, notice that's required. Months. It actually Let's has just notice to be it once right now and say from here on out every email from Whatcom County no, Council No, you guys are blending two issues. He's talking about public disclosure. Well, emails. no, I'm talking about no, open. I'm talking that. about open no. public meetings. Like, could we? Would it be an open public meeting if the electronic conversation was published simultaneously on on a publicly viewable <laughs> medium? <laughs> That's something that I think I'd like to think about. I don't think that the law has necessarily caught up with that idea because right now the Open Public Meetings Act requires that if you are going to have, um, I, I mean, it anticipates, it still anticipates like regular meetings. It doesn't really anticipate meetings by email or phone. And you have to either have a regular schedule that you publish of, of meetings like we do at our yearly meetings, or if you have a special meeting, you have to send out a 24-hour notice to the press. So I don't know how that would jive with doing what you're proposing. Mr. White. I just want to make sure I've got it straight about the open public meetings. That applies not only to a quorum of the council, but to a quorum of a committee, that's, too, that's doesn't it? That's correct. So it actually would be illegal for me, since we're both on the finance right. committee, to send an email to Ken saying, what do you think about Dewey's right. idea about parking? Right. Yeah. I, that's, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. That's absolutely... Or to if call it them pertains, on the phone. Right. If it pertains to your committee's subject matter, that's absolutely right. Well, part of the pr problem we have with email, then, is sometimes someone, Barbara does this a lot because she copies everybody on the council. So she's having a discussion with Gladys Smith in Birch Bay about Lincoln Road and she tells Gladys what she thinks and copies everybody else and then Gladys wants to know what I know. If I copy the council then we're having a meeting. Right. If I send it just to Gladys is that okay and don't count, copy the rest of the council? Because sometimes she precludes me by talking to constituents. There's a clear answer to that. Yeah, I'm not, uh, <laughs> I, I think Ward's, Ward's got the best Ward's solution. Got the solution. <laughs> Go ahead. Ignore all Get email. rid of the council. <laughs> Get rid of email entirely. Just delete it. Uh, no, we I didn't it. hear that. Yeah, we don't delete it. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Ms. Brenner. Um, I, what I do is I will copy, I always copy staff and I copy council members. If I'm talking about something, that's council, but I'm and I, I usually it's because I'm prefacing by saying I'm only one council member or something like that, or if it's information, I I just it to me it's just saying something to people. I'm not expecting anything back. Right, but even when you don't expect something back, it can generate a discussion, and that's you kind of inadvertently create an open public meeting. So, I'm not are we, so are you better it. off not copying each other when we're talking with constituents? <laughs> yeah, I think that's yeah, I think that's probably true. But you copy oh. the council, right? It goes, no, no, I guess we can't. I talk to a either. constituent. Well, okay. It's too bad because I, you know, I I like it when Barbara copies me on these things because I learn about what's going on out there and she's very good about corresponding with constituents. And, and you know, it, I'm not saying never do it, but by doing it you create the situation that Carl described. I mean, it, it, Carl could say in that situation, I can't 
discuss this with you. It will need to be in the context of our next committee meeting or something like that. Well, Ms. Brenner? He can discuss it with the person, but he just can't discuss it with me. I don't think that's true. But, it, 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 well, yeah, if he, if he does it individually with that person, it but might be okay. I don't see okay. anybody else. Yeah, you're getting into pretty technical questions here, and I, I think it's probably best when these issues come up to consult with me and I can advise you on it. I write these things all but, the time. But that's one that comes year. up Well, I'm every, not telling you every other day. I mean, that's, gonna, you know, you'll, that's all we'd ever ask you about. So mm -hmm. I think, well, part of what I was hoping to get out of this meeting was some clear and simple guidelines that we can use to not run afoul of the law. And what I'm gathering is basically don't read your email, you know, and don't respond to email. But my email well, is a public Well, just record. don't start read. discussions That's what amongst mean. each other, um, which can actually, if you copy everybody, that could be interpreted as a discussion. I don't think that this is... Uh, you know, at least from what I've observed, I don't think the way you're doing things has created a problem. I mean, occasionally the issue comes up, and I appreciate your sensitivity to it. I think, I think you are sensitive to it. So I I'm not suggesting that you change the way you do things now. Just be sensitive to the issue. Okay. Ms. Brenner? Well, how is, if I don't copy them anymore and stuff, my stuff is still a public document. It's at the council office. Well, they can I read it. How is that any different? Well, the chance, the ch I, I don't know what the odds are they will read if, if it's there. I'm sure everybody <laughs> likes to read my emails. <laughs> um, and, and that's what's operative, whether they read it or not. OK. Anything Don't further on this emails. particular topic before we move on to email them. retention and that stuff? Okay. okay. Hmm. So emails and My records like is. that. Well, let me. No, I, I'll stand okay, here, Okay, we'll, we'll get both of you. Yeah. What? It, it's, well, it's, it's the same thing. It's very, you know, it's convenient to be using email. And we want, I, I, if we just saved every single email. I do. That would be great, but now we have this problem of text messages or things of that nature. So what, are, what is your understanding of the rules of retaining those records and how are we doing? Um, the, hmm. the rules are the same. If it pertains to the operation of government, it is a public record and is subject to the same retention schedule that anything else involving that subject matter would involve. The states recently revised their retention schedules to identify. Mark, you need to identify oh, yourself. Mark Burnfield, the uh, county public records officer. Um, pull that mic up just a little bit. The, uh, the retention schedules have been changed recently to reflect um, a category now called communications. Um, so rather than correspondence, email, that sort of thing, they, the state has recognized that T technology is rolling along and, and local and state agencies want to take advantage of that technology. So now they've come up with a, a classification um, of communications, which includes any of the media uh, or the, the types of communications we're talking about. And there are just, there are two kinds. There's executive level, which is elected officials and department heads. And then there's the rest of us non-executive types. And the retentions are the same. It's two years. Um, the difference is people in your position are, all, your records are all potentially archival. Um, so they have a much longer retention schedule. And, um, but they've changed the schedules precisely to reflect the fact that the technologies are changing. Ms. Brenner? Well, how is somebody doing a blog? That's, a, that's an interaction. How is that?